Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. I really appreciate having you here. You should definitely hit subscribe before you go any further and before you realise how bad this fucking content is. If this isn't your first time on the channel, you should definitely seek professional help, but welcome back in either case. For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Cyber Dragon, a deck that has evolved quite a bit over the last few years from going from a pure going second deck from being able to play going first as well. Of course, it usually favours going second, but there are options in either case to play either way. If it needs to go first for a fullback, it absolutely can. If it needs to go second, well, that plays right into its hands. I'm sure today's deck profile won't be perfect. It never fucking is, because it's mostly just garbage anyway. But if you're looking for somewhere to start and something to build from, hopefully this will give you some ideas. If you absolutely love this deck profile because there's something wrong with you and you decide you're going to go out and get some singles, consider checking the link in the description to the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK if you want to get yourself a nice discount on their eBay store. They also don't just do Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, they do Pokemon ones too. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck into the deck profile. So before we go any further, let me first apologise if you hear a loud whirring sound in the background. Hopefully we can clip it out with the audio editing, but that is my fans on my laptop going like the absolute fucking clappers. But anyway, you're not here to hear me waffle, let's get stuck into the deck profile. So we start off with triple copies of Cyber Dragon. I mean, it's a Cyber Dragon deck, and if you don't play triple copies, you're a fucking goon. We have triple copies of Core, triple copies of Hers... Double copies of Naxta, and a single copy of Dry. So this is entirely up to yourselves. I find that this particular ratio works really nicely for me. Of course, it's different for everyone, and what they find works for them. I do find that these ratios, though, again, they work particularly well in this build, at least in my opinion. We'll move on to two copies of Galaxy Soldier. I know some people favour three. Two's worked absolutely fine in testing for me. I think a third one gets a little bit cloggy. You really don't want to see it too much in hand, especially if you open multiples, it can become really incredibly bricky. Running the Machine Kaiju here, this is just for out-in problematic monsters, and of course it's easy enough for you to absolutely plough the fuck out of. There's also some cool interactions with Fortress, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. We move on to our hand traps here, I wanted to go with the ones that I felt were most potent in the majority of scenarios. So Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring, of course, a diverse hand trap that basically hits every deck in at least some capacity, even if it is just a small amount. And against other decks, especially rogue builds, it can really cripple the opponent. We have triple copies of Ghost Bell. I certainly think this is a better modern pick for the current meta game. Uh, this is entirely up to yourselves, of course. It's a little bit of a flex spot if you want to run something different, but I find Ghost Bell works really well. Just a single copy of Cyber Rev System. You could run more if you wanted to. I do find, though, that there's not really much point. They get a little bit too cloggy. I think one is perfectly fine. There is worth note that this isn't a once per turn, so of course you could add more if you really wanted to. Cyber Emergency, now a hell of a lot cheaper than it was before with these reprints, so definitely a card that you should have available to you. If you want to play this deck, you absolutely need to run three of these, no question about it. It's basically right for the deck, what is not to like. There's also the fact that it has that ability to recur itself if your opponent tries to stop it, which can come up an awful lot. We have just a single copy of Cyberload Fusion here. You could go up to multiples, but I really don't feel the need to. I think you've got enough ground covered with the rest of the deck. I do like the fact that the restriction on this is only for the rest of the turn, so you can go about your battle phase, do a bunch of damage, and of course flip this up, still punch in for even more damage, hopefully for game, and even if you can't, it's not really a big issue, you carry on about your day. Two copies of Cyber Repair Plant here, you could potentially play three if you wanted to, I think two is absolutely fine, of course this again acting as a rotor, or the fact that you can recur resources by shuffling stuff back into your deck from the graveyard, if you want to keep moving those around. Two copies of Overload Fusion here. I think this is a really good option to have. Again, just the two copies. I think three is way too cocky. You could potentially run this at one if you wanted to, but I think two works as a nice sweet spot. I've got two copies of Machine Duplication here. Again, this is entirely down to personal preference. I think two is absolutely fine. Three can get very much coggy, and one definitely isn't enough. 
If you can see this in your opening hand, it is really good. So for that reason, it can be worth considering running up to three. Although I really think the two works quite nicely. Triple copies of Forbidden Droplet. I cannot emphasize to you enough how strong this card is. There's so many other alternatives that you could consider if you want to play on a budget. But honestly, none of them do exactly what this card does. If you can't afford this card and you wanted to do something a little bit cheaper, of course, you could try out other hand traps. You could try out cards like Call by the Grave as just good utility cards. Although again, none of them will do the job that this does. We have two copies of Cybernetic Overflow. I think two is absolutely perfect. You definitely don't want just the one. I think you want to be able to hedge your bets so you'll see one of these if you can go first. That's always a good option. This is a really neat bit of interruption and something you should definitely be playing in this deck. And then we round off our main deck with triple copies of Infinite Impermanence. This is entirely up to you again as a flex spot. If you can't afford these, don't have access to them. But it is really good. The fact that you can go first with it is really nice because you can just set it and stop your opponent. You can switch off their back row. And of course, it's an Effect Veiler-esque effect. Next up, we're moving on to the extra deck. As always with these, we are omitting the side deck. It's really not necessary because it really depends on what you're playing against as to whether you want to run certain cards in the side deck, depending on the event you're attending, whether it's an online locals, whether it's a remote duel, whether it's whatever the hell you like, it really comes down to what you're playing against. So we'll get stuck straight into the extra deck. So we're running a single copy of Mega Fleet. This is definitely nowhere near as powerful or as potent as it was in the past, but certainly a very good option to have in there to play about your plays. We have a single copy of Chimera Tech Overdrag, and this is just for punching for absolutely fucking huge Damage, that's all that this card does, and that's all that we needed to do. Kamari Tech Fortress Dragon is again another really good option for punching for some additional damage. The fact that you can also get rid of your opponent's cards comes up quite nicely as well. And then we have the OTK Machine, Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon. This will absolutely light the fuck up out of your opponent. Really, really cool stuff. Just setting this up and then laying down the Pearl Harbor on your opponent is really fucking nice. I'm going to mention these two in conjunction, Cyber Dragon Nova and Cyber Dragon Infinity, of course, normally because you can go into one and then into the other. Some decide to play less copies of Infinity, some decide they only want to play one of each. That's entirely up to you. I think two of each is a really good, nice option. Again, you can run additional copies if you want to as well. I felt that the extra deck warranted, though, more utility, which is exactly what I've gone with. And again, if you have the option to play Zeus, you absolutely need to play it. There are other cards you could play instead. You can definitely run some other utility cards or what have you, but this is just going to help you go into those ridiculous boards and break them, and then of course go about your business. The fact that it's a machine as well also gives you some nice additional synergy. We've got a couple of options here for getting our level ones into the grave, getting them off the field. Relinquished Anima is one such option. Uh, in certain scenarios, this can come up and be really strong and potent. We have a single copy of Link Rebo for much the same reason. Of course, being able to protect your life points, protect you from attacks, all of that good stuff. A really nice option. Our final Cyber Dragon card for today, Cyber Dragon Seeger. Uh, again, this is one of your important cards in that kind of combo and line of plays you play through. It's going to help you deal additional damage, beef up your monsters, all of that good stuff. Now, Predator Plant Vert Anaconda, because doing some bullshit shenanigans is really fucking nice. This card is still absolutely broken. Being able to fusion summon from basically any point in the duel is really cool. And then our final card here is just a utility one. We've gone for Nightmare Phoenix. You could run something like Unicorn or, in fact, any other Link monster you like. Or, well, in fact, any other card you like. A bit of a flex spot, but I find Nightmare Phoenix to be really quite useful. Being able to remove some back row, especially in a deck that will often go second and try and OTK, can be a really good option to use. And that is all for today's deck profile. By virtue of the fact that you made it this far, hopefully you've enjoyed it enough to have hit subscribe, or at least hated it enough that you couldn't look away. In either case, thank you very much for making it this far. Many people don't. It'd be good to hear from those of you who do. If you have already subscribed, consider hitting the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of this content in future. If there's something you'd like to see on the channel, definitely let me know down in the description or reach out to me on social media. I'm always happy to listen to your guys' comments and hear what you'd like to see implemented on the channel. But anyway, that's enough nonsense from me. Let's get the fuck out of here. I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.